Recording, yeah. Your highlights match your socks. How about, look at these crazy socks. It totally matches this part. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Um, okay, so, uh, hey everyone, Blaze and Rye Radio. I'm sitting here in beautiful Park Slope, Brooklyn, with the Trues. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Nice, um, nice vocal projecting. Yeah, oh, man. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, Sean. Um, now you uh, you've said that doing acoustic songs makes uh, makes you a better musician. Why do you think so? Um, probably because you just have to pay attention to um, details that um, you know loud instruments probably cover up. You know, there's like there's you really can't get away with anything when everything is that stripped down. You have to be pretty good and tight, and everything has to be in tune. You know, you can't really you can't really hide it. So because everything gets picked up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everything's very, very subtle. Cool. So you guys are now the Trues, but you started as One-Eyed Trouser? How come you guys got rid of that uh, that name? That name would never... Ten years ago, <laughs> I've never known that that name ever existed. Um, <laughs> you know, um, we, were you know love, actually, we were in Lovely Lads. We, we started out under that name, it's true. Mm -hmm. We did some shows, but actually Sean was never around for that embarrassment. Uh, so <laughs> it was it was me and Colin and Jack. He's just around for this. And we played uh, <laughs> we played under that name in high school. It's basically just being uh, we always wrote songs or attempted to write songs, but we were mostly just doing covers and playing dances and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that was the name. And it was, we lifted it from uh, Monty Python film the Meaning of Life. Sure. I think the one I tried was the Dick song. I think it's called. <laughs> the Dick song. Yeah. Is Monty Python the Artistic, creative influence on you guys? Oh, they're brilliant. They are brilliant. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, like, if we were in comedy, <laughs> it would be <laughs> our biggest influence. Yeah, man. Well, speaking of comedy, I've, I've noticed that uh, a lot of your song titles are um, stupid. <laughs> no, they're just kind of de like depressing. So she's leaving, yearning, poor old broken-hearted me. But it does is do you guys is that like a, a common theme for you guys to kind of? Uh, Get real emotional with uh, it, yes. your music. I mean, I guess it is for anyone, but uh, it, like I noticed, there's kind of a trend uh, amongst these song titles. Yeah, um, I just think that sometimes song writing comes out of a place of angst, and, and you can't avoid it. You know, and, and all of a sudden, your most memorable tune has maybe a depressing chorus line, but it's a great, it's, it makes a great song or whatever. That's how it kind of comes about. You know, I don't think it's uh, preconceived. I don't think anything, any of us have a, a depression agenda. It right. just, uh, <laughs> just so happens that, you know, oh, this tune's really good. Oh, it happens to be about, oh, okay, well, whatever. Same girl, different song. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and I guess people can relate to that, and so it doesn't... Yeah, and I don't, it, it's, it's more important about what we can relate to, like what we uh -huh. remember, and, and, you know, what sounds the best, and what works the best off this lick. It's, yeah. it's sometimes just way more boring and clinical than what people would think. And then you look back on it, you're like, Oh wow, shit, every song's about this. Oh, okay, okay, whatever, but they're all there, you know, and the songs are written, so it's, you know, it's, it's definitely not a theme. I, if I could write a great, heartfelt song about, like, about, like, my fight on, I would, but I just can't. Right. Yeah. Is that something any other guys want to try, writing a heartfelt song? Yeah, they, they try every day, but they just can't, they can't <laughs> do it. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's as preconceived as some people think that it is. So, um, it's only one thing, so, yeah. And also, what... What else are you going to, I mean, what do most dudes, like, spend their time obsessing over? You know, it's probably girls, you know, and so it's, I guess we're just no exception. It, it impacts the life, like, whatever impacts your life impacts what you write, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, man. Um, so I've read that you guys uh, are, are quoted saying the industry demands you to, quote, uh, compete. Do you find that being a, a negative thing? Does that take away some of your your freedom with the music, or do you find that it's a good thing that it kind of inspires you? Well, I I think that we're making the kind of music we want to make, you know, um, because that's true, and I think that actually came from our first bio, first bio buddy, right? so I don't know if it's a direct quote, but um, but I think what he's referring to is like uh, how sometimes. I guess you feel the pressure to, to at least live up to, your, to yourself or, or your previous achievements and all that kind of stuff. But um, at the end of the day, I don't think we'd be making drastically different music if it was just a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We 
we're still do, we're still making what we the, the kind of music we grew up listening to and loving, and you know it's not like we go home and listen to a totally different kind of music than we create. And this is sort of a sum of what we listen to. And it's, it's what you what you end up with is, is just a sum of our influences. We don't trust you anyway. Right, and you guys had a, a sort of a some sort of downtime recently where there was kind of a, a blank canvas that yeah, you guys could start it's a little bit yeah a new one i guess i know it's um, a bit exaggerated and it's, it's it's a little dramatic i guess but so we basically happened? did that acoustic record yeah. we did that uh friends and total strangers acoustic dvd and cd uh-huh yeah i can't see it uh, anyway so uh and that led to um basically like i think we felt like after that tour we could sort of do whatever we wanted because we had, we were known for holding your arms and that record going forward how do we sort of living in this like head like this trend of like heavy rock and stuff and then the uh, acoustic record sort of threw like a curveball to people and people were sort of really well like really well received uh-huh. so it gave us a, a sort of opportunity to sort of uh, broaden the horizon a little bit and back in the studio and I think that's why that's that's what the blank canvas thing comes from okay Adrian who wrote that biography is, is great at He was, he came on sort of accidentally as Yeah, he just sat down, grabbed a guitar, we, like, we just sit around the living room and play guitars, and, and people would just bring in their ideas, and we'd uh-huh. uh, them back and forth. And, you know, basically our schedule is wake up at noon, you know, have some coffee, sit around the living room, and write from one until six, mm-hmm. and then break for supper, and then work from seven till dawn. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you guys have, um, you mentioned that it was in Bath that you were recording this, and uh, I read in your bio, the Trues were tired when they walked into the bathhouse, they were rejuvenated by the time they walked out. That sounds, I mean, that kind of shit would kill you, I, you know, if you walk into a bathhouse and walk out <laughs> rejuvenated, as, I mean... Yeah, so it's called the Bat House. Let me clear the air. Bat House, Once really? and for all. B A one T H O U S E. It's uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's a common that's misconception. I, that's pretty much the best thing I've ever heard. All right, next one. Um, okay, next one. All right. All right. So, uh, how about this? This quote came from Performer Magazine. Uh, the Trues are, without a doubt, the greatest rock band of their generation. That's quite a compliment. Yeah, he was fired for smoking crack. Right. <laughs> no, um, no, he, uh, yeah, we were super, like, that's high praise. And, uh-huh. and thank you very much to the writer who said that. Uh, I think he talked to you in an interview. And uh, it was really cool. We were really, really happy to hear that. I mean, we don't go around introducing ourselves as such on stage. Uh, right. But uh, we, we definitely appreciate it. Be great if you did. We're the greatest rock band. Ladies and gentlemen, generation. please welcome the greatest rock and roll of their generation. <laughs> Us. <laughs> um, so you guys have a big show coming up. Uh, Mercury Lounge, June yeah. 28th. You guys excited? Yeah, we played there in January, and it was it's a good it's a good place for us. We played there a few times. It's always fun, you know. It's uh, it's a good neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, okay. Last thing we got to do. Uh, we uh, we always play a game on the show. It's called Hot or Hot Mess. I'm going to give you guys a quick list of things. You tell me if they're hot or a hot mess. This is specific to you guys. You've worked with a number of great artists. Um, uh, yes, so I'll, I'll give you uh, an artist. Yeah, but you, what does hot mean? What does hot mess mean? It's all in the eye of the, the holder. Okay, so, in the eye of the ear holder. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so uh, uh, Guns N' Roses, hot or hot mess? Hot. Hot. Hang on, I don't understand. Like, so hot is better than... 